Hi, I'm Father Thaddeus Langton with the 90 Days for the Souls in Purgatory. Today is day 31, and we intercede for the souls of thieves and robbers. We turn to paragraph 2408 in the Catechism. The seventh commandment forbids theft, that is, usurping another's property against the reasonable will of the owner. There is no theft if consent can be presumed or if refusal is contrary to reason and the universal destination of goods. This is the case in obvious and urgent necessity, when the only way to provide for immediate essential needs, food, shelter, clothing, is to put at one's disposal and use the property of others. Now, it seems pretty obvious to us that those who steal, those who rob, are ones who would be suffering in purgatory to atone for their sins. But what may not be so obvious to us is that in order to repent fully of such sins, it's necessary not only to go to confession, but to make factual restitution for what has been stolen, whether great or small. And this is where sometimes we can find ourselves as little thieves, not because we've gone to stores and robbed things, but perhaps because from our place of work, we've taken a few things that don't actually belong to us, and we justify it saying, ah, it's just a few things. That too, is stealing. And even those small things need to be restored to their proper owners, and if not, we need to somehow give that property for the sake of the poor, because we cannot retain what we have improperly acquired. And also, the second part of the catechism quote here is rather interesting, because it's not invalidating the commandment, but it is pointing out that, ironically, those who hoard too many riches actually steal from the poor, not because they are taking money or property from the poor themselves, as if they possessed it, but because they steal by preventing them from having what they need to live. And that's a bit harder for us, especially when we think about those of us who live in Western societies, where we have quite a bit of affluence. The church fathers are rather strong, that when we give alms to the poor, first and foremost, we're not doing acts of mercy doing acts of justice. We're giving them what is their right, what is their due. And therefore, if we refuse to do that, we actually are thieves and robbers. We are the ones stealing from the poor what they need, which is why the Catechism makes clear that if a poor person really has no other way of obtaining food for himself, herself, or their children, then they actually are justified in appropriating for their own use what belongs to the rich, which can sound crazy, like a Robin Hood idea. But the point here is that God provides the resources of creation for the good of all, the universal destination of goods. And this is why, as Catholics, giving to the poor is essential. It is participating in God's providence so that everybody has enough. And it's part of the basic commandment to love others as we love ourselves, which means quite literally, we desire the good things for them that we desire for ourselves, food, clothing, protection, all the basics of life, which would mean that we may have to cut down on the superfluities of life, those things that we don't actually need but that we want, so that we provide for others what they actually do need. And so we pray today, and I invite you to pray Divine Mercy Chaplet or a Chaplet of the Ten Virtues for the souls of thieves and, thieves and robbers, perhaps people who didn't even realize that they were stealing or who did not make proper restitution. We pray that they may soon enter into the glory of heaven. May the Virgin Mary's Immaculate Conception be our salvation and our protection. St. Stanislaus Papczynski, pray for us and for the souls in purgatory.